So when we get into moisture testing, and you look at how many readings should we obtain from wood flooring on a job site? And the BFSA states a good sampling is 40 planks per thousand square feet. And that uh, is when we start looking at that type of moisture testing, what's critical is, is, is some people, how long that's going to take a long time to do 40 readings? And typically, how many of us send out a two-man crew? I mean, most of the time you'll find a guy go out in a two-man crew, you run the pencil, I'll run the meter. And in about two minutes, I'll give you 40 readings. That's all you got for your work order, that's all you need. It's done. And so it's really important to know. Now, how many readings should you be taking for your records? And that's what we typically will tell you in, in sampling. And I've got one inspection I did, and, and I was just as guilty of it when I was doing install. You know, you'd sit there and sample the piles that are on top. It was not a good representation of what's underneath. So it's good a representation is, is take representation from the entire stock, not from one room, but from three rooms and rotating your stock to do it. It's not that difficult to grab, you know, 40 planks per thousand. And typically they'll say the same thing on your subfloor is 20 readings, for example, like when you're dealing 20 readings per thousand for your subfloor. This is something else that's also required. Now in this case is an old photograph where they're showing they had Subfloor reading, they've got it written on the, on the subfloor is eight and a half percent. They'll be dating on it. Uh, they also did the floor trusses. They did the studs in the basement. We talked a little bit about that before, and it's showing on where they did their pin readings on on their on their wood material. But they've got documentation showing it what that subfloor is and also of what the floor materials are. We have to remember that as an installer, if I showed up. Um, for example, let's say a vocal point here wants to hire me as an installer. My job is to show up there on Monday, start my install, I'll be out of there by Tuesday night. In those two days' times, I've got my documentation of temperature, relative humidity. That's the only responsibility I have at that point. It's going back to is I've done my due diligence as an installer for the period I was present. I'm not responsible for the control that happened six weeks later when the tile setter showed up. Some will actually take and do it by mapping it. Like a lot of times you'll see restoration companies will go in and map it. For example, here you see my first and second reading was 14%, my first and second, 13 and 14. Here you'll see first and second reading, 15. With the PDFs today, it's not that hard to pump out a few of the, of the mapping so an installer can have something like this. Uh, the other thing that's done on some of the new uh, apps on your, on your smart devices, like on for an iPad, you can actually shoot, geotag the pad. It'll tell you the date, the time, and be in geotag. And you can also write like they did earlier on that one on subfloor. You can write it on the subfloor, and it will take and be able to upload to the cloud like that. Just basic, simple pin operation. So when you look at a <coughs> penetration here, this, these are veneer pins. This is good for doing like your what we call veneer, your beater, lamellas. Uh, they're a 516 pin, non-insulated. You can look at some of the meters, and the basic the one we like best is having a species correction as well as temperature corrections. And some will actually take and do, like you know, in Delmers, they'll actually have where you get in being able to um, store the information per job. So you could take 20 readings and they're all stored on your, on, your, on your meter. And so we typically want you to upgrade to a, instead of a basic meter, is going into a, a meter that will be able to support you documents and have it upload into your computer. Here's one that I use and I see a lot if we're dealing with anything with the high-end projects. This is something that you're dealing with, you know, um, I'm going to say if you're dealing in with, you know, projects that are going to be 40000 and up. A meter manufacturer, like this one's Delmhurst, but here it's called a calibration check. It's very important at the time of installation. And this is a little check block. It costs about $40. When you, all you do is you put the probes on that. One says 12, one says 22, so you can, you can calibrate and check your calibration at 12 and at 22. You can see, well, it's hard in the photograph here, but this is 12%. So my meter at the time of installation is calibrated. So it could not be argued in court later saying your, your meter was 4% off and I want you to prove it. It's proof, one picture for 40 bucks. When we're dealing in with the hammer probes, and we talked earlier about substrates, or if you're dealing, for example, on uh, a claim that you have in a, 
moisture related issues if you're dealing either too dry or too wet. These pins are insulated. It's called a slide hammer right here and they will take readings because it's insulated here and it has a non-insulated tip. We can actually take a moisture reading at quarter inch down, halfway down, in the bottom of the material and even into the subfloor. So we can do four different readings all in one hole. So it's important to know when you're dealing with, it, they're not the most convenient thing to carry around, they're about 30 pounds, but they are convenient when you're trying to isolate moisture related concerns, especially in dealing with substrates, because now you can get what's actually into the substrate and show that we've got moisture higher, uh, uh, a gradient moisture content of what's on the surface as what's into the substrate. You can see like a 4% difference. We know we have moisture relationship concerns that created the cupping. Mm -hmm.